Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 27 of my Algebra video tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, this should be really fun because we're going to talk about Euler's number and logarithms. And by the end, you will completely understand both. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain both Euler's number and logarithms in multiple different ways. And just to be fun, I'm going to explain them in more complicated ways at the beginning of the video, and then we're going to get progressively easier. And by the end, you're, you'll completely understand both. Okay, so to understand logarithms, we're going to sort of start with logarithms, and then we're going to go into Euler's number, and then we're going to come back to logarithms, just because I think it's interesting. Okay, so to understand logarithms, we have to first understand exponents. So exponents tell us how many times to multiply a number times itself, right? So if we have 2 to the third, that is the same as saying multiply 2 times 2 times 2, which gives us a value of 8. Well, algorithms tell us what the exponent is. And this isn't the exciting thing or the interesting thing about logarithms what I'm covering right now. I'm covering that in a couple minutes. Okay, so what this happens to be is 2 question mark is equal to 8 becomes log 2, 8 is equal to 3, all right? So it's like the opposite. This goes down here, and this goes over here, and the 8 comes in here and goes right there. All right, now you're going to have different types of, well, let me go show you another example here. If we would have log and n equal to three, this is the same as saying n is equal to two to the third, which is equal to eight. All right, just felt like covering that here one more time. Now, of course, there are different types of logarithms. You could have, for example, log 4 and 16. And of course, this is going to be equal to what? All right, 2. And you could also have log 25 and 5. And this is a little bit more complicated. What's that going to be? Well, let me tr transform it into its normal exponent form, which you're used to, 25n is equal to 5, which could then be transformed into n. 25 is equal to 5, or this could be transferred into the square root of 25 is equal to 5, which means that log 25, like this, is equal to 1 half. All right, so different ways to look at this stuff. And what you're commonly going to come across, however, is what are, is either going to be base 10 logarithms or natural logarithms. I find natural logarithms to be the most interesting, so I'll cover those the most. Basically, base 10 logarithms are gonna tell you how many times do we use 10 to get a value. And it is called the common logarithm, okay? And just to show you an example, if you had a base 10 logarithm with 100 inside of this, well, how many times do you have to multiply 10 times itself to get 100? That is going to be equal to two. Well, that's gonna bring us to what is called the natural logarithm, which is very often abbreviated to LNX like this. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna tell us how many times we use Euler's number, which if you don't know what that is, it is 2.71828. And I'm actually gonna show you how to calculate it in this video as well. So it tells us how many times we use Euler's number in a multiplication to get a result. So you may ask yourself, well, why exactly is Euler's number so awesome? You hear about it all the time and it probably doesn't make sense to many people. Well, basically, Euler's number is just, and again, I'm going to start off complicated and get easier. It is the rate of growth for all continually growing processes. Really complicated. 
And uh, don't worry, you'll understand it here in about one minute. EX is going to be the amount we'll have after starting at one and growing continuously over X units of time. So those are sort of things that might not make sense. So let me go and show you an example. Let's say, for example, that you found an investment that would double your money in one year. So you are going to basically start off on day zero or day one. And after one year, you are going to go from having one big old dollar to after that, you are at the end of the year, you're going to have two big old dollars. All right. So that is the investment that you found. And it's fantastic. If you ever hear about it, tell me about it. But the thing is, is in the normal world, your return doesn't happen all at once. It increases gradually. And so, for example, after six months, you would have 50% more. So if we go and say after six months, this would be, well, it's actually going to be your original amount. And then you are going to have 50% of your final amount right here. All right. But the thing is, is your interest that you have accumulated is also going to accumulate interest. So how exactly is this going to work? Well, let's start off here. Let's say that we are going to go and we are going to invest $1. And at the end of the year, that is going to double. And on top of that, we're also going to get interest on the 50 cents that we earned at the six month rate. So we could come in here and we could say we start off at zero. And at that point in time, we have $1 then at the six month mark, we are going to come in and we're still going to have $1 in our bank, but we are also going to have an additional 50 cents. So put 50 cents here like that. And then at the end of the year, 12 month mark, we are still going to have our original $1 investment but we are going to have our other 50 cent because remember this dollar right here is going to accumulate to make two by the end of the year. So we're going to now have two 50 cents. So we're gonna have the 50 cent that is right there and we're going to have another 50 cent. But don't forget, we also need to earn interest on this 50 cent. And the interest, if we get 50%, because we're only going from six months to 12 months, well, that is going to give us an additional 25 cent interest on this 50% that is right here. So that leaves us now that we are going to be compounding every six months with a total of $2 and 25 cents. And let's get even more complicated. But you may ask yourself, well, what happens if we go and earn interest every four months instead? Well, let's go and figure it out. So we are going to start off with our original $1 investment. And of course, that $1 isn't going to go anywhere. So that $1 is going to stay with us. And it's also going to earn interest every four months. How much interest? Well, we have one month, that's gonna be an interest payment, two months, three months. And if we divide 100 by three, that's gonna give us 33.33333. I'm just gonna basically make it 33 cents. So in that situation, we know after one month, we're going to have an additional 33 cents. Well, that 33 cents isn't gonna go anywhere either. So let's go and leave it here every single month. But on top of that, this guy right here is going to earn us another 33 cents the next um, month that we have, or the next four months later. And that's not going away. So let's go and add that in as well. And then from here, this is going to earn us another 33 cents. So let's go and throw that inside of there. 
But now these 33 cents are also going to be earning us some additional money. So this 33 right here is going to earn us 11 cents. And that 11 cents isn't going anywhere, so it's gonna stay right here. And then this month, we have two more 33s, so they're gonna earn us an additional two more 11 cents. And then let's not forget the 11 cents, which is going to earn us an additional seven cents. And then if we go and add all of these up, we would get a final amount here of $2 and 39 cents if I did that math correctly. Well, that's 39 cents more than if we just earned interest of 100% after one year. So you might start thinking to yourself, can we generate an infinite amount of money if we collect interest at a specific target time period? Like let's say every week or every minute or every second. Well, actually, the formula for calculating the total over a given number of time periods is one plus one N, where N is the number of time periods, and one over N is 100% growth, that's what the one represents, over the number of periods. So what I did, and you might be sad to find this out, is I went and I increased my time periods, not from one, not to two, not to three, but up to one million times. And if you do that, that means that the maximum amount is going to end up being, if you invested $1, that you would end up with $2.71, 8280, blah, 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 as your maximum amount if you compounded 100% growth rate over a given period continuously. And guess what Euler's number is? It is 2.7182, and of course it continues going on and on. This is not Euler's number, but it is a very, very close approximation of it. And like I said, it represents the maximum possible result when compounding 100% growth over a given time period. And what's cool about this is that every rate of growth can be written using this universal constant. So you may say to yourself, well, how would I figure out what my growth would be if we grow at 50%? Well, simply I use this formula that I already talked about here before, or you use Euler's number, but I'm going to show you both. And that would end up being 1 plus 0.5 over n to the power of n. And this is going to be equal to 1.648. And guess what that's also equal to? Euler's number to 1 half. And 1 half representing the 50%. So what would be the total if we grew at 200% over that same period? Well, you just take Euler's number like this, and that would be equal to 7.389. And this can't just this isn't only used for money, of course. It can be used to basically calculate growth. Period. It's a universal constant. Another thing is interesting is we can also use different times. Like if we weren't if we would earn 100% in a year, how much would we have after six months? Well, Euler's number and the x up here is actually going to be rate of interest or rate of growth, whatever, times time, like this. So if we wanted to find out if we would earn 100% after a year, how much would we have after six months? What we would do is we would say E1 representing 100% times one half. And after six months, we would have one dollar and six four eight. All right. And what about one and a half years? Well, we could just take E one point five, and that would give us four dollars and forty eight cents. Okay. Another thing would be interesting is you could calculate what is the total at eight percent return after ten years. Well, that would be E. And then you'd have your 8% return, and then times 10, and that would be $2.22 with a 5 at the end. 
All right, so you can see how really, really powerful this universal constant is. So that's gonna bring us back over to the natural logarithm. This is logarithm, not algorithm. I make a video every day, so that is the reason why that says algorithm instead of logarithm. You'll understand, I'm sure. Okay, so if we know that e to the x is going to provide growth given time, then the natural logarithm is going to receive growth and return time. Well, why is that useful? Well, let's say we use, we have ln e. You don't have to put the e inside of there. You can just leave that off. And 1. So what this is saying is, how long does it take to get 1 times what I already have? That's what it's saying. Well, obviously, it takes no time. So you may ask yourself, well, what does this mean then? So we'll put a negative 1 inside of here is equal to what this is saying is if I have one ball how long until I have negative one ball well since there is no such thing as a negative ball if you ever see a negative value for this this is going to be equal to undefined so now let's go and actually use some real-world situations let's say we want to find out how long does it take to double my money well you just go ln and two, and you would get a value of 6.93, which would be equal to eight months, if I had a 100% interest rate that compounded continuously. And the really interesting thing is the natural logarithm also works with rate and time, just like Euler's number. So let's say we wanted to find out how long it takes to double my money with an 8% growth rate. Well, I would have LN2 doubling my money, and this is equal to 6 point, or 0 0.693. And if we know that this is actually equal to rate times time, 0 0.693, well then we can say, well our rate is 0 0.08 times time, which is equal to 6.98 or 0.693. So that means that the amount of time it will take you to double your money if you are earning a 8% is going to be 0.693 divided by 0.08, which would be equal to or equivalent to 8.66 years. All right, so there you go. Hopefully now Euler's number it makes sense to you. And not only makes sense to you, maybe it gets you a little bit excited. And uh, you understand logarithms and how they work and how cool they are. And you have a complete understanding of both. That was the goal of this video. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.